In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. As we gather on this beautiful day, once again, it's good to hear the organ again. <laughs> we haven't heard that sound in the church in quite a while, but even better is to hear so many voices uh, praising God and asking God's for God's forgiveness of our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped. Then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus, death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern and the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for many? The word of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. But I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. I never thought I would ever, ever say this in my entire priestly life, but and I, I've, maybe last week I said it too, but you know that we're not supposed to be singing. <laughs> I was going to say we can't sing, but, you know, that's, that's really not totally accurate. Some of us can sing. (laughs) We are not supposed to sing uh, while we're under COVID. You know, it spreads more germs further away. Somebody did a study. So, of course, even with masks on, blah, da, 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 da. I don't know. So that's why we're not uh, chanting the mass parts and singing. It's okay for a cantor to sing in the choir loft. And I think, uh, I don't know, some churches have a, if the cantor faces you, the cantor has a plexiglass screen in front of them because obviously they can't canter with a mask on. I guess you could try. Uh, partly because of the camera, but also partly because of that, I'm not preaching from the ambo, which is sort of over everybody. In podcast. So anyway, we'll try to follow things sensibly. I do have to add, though, that uh, I said it at Daily Mass the day the, the monitor came out because you may get the sense that we're I hope you never get the sense that I'm reckless or not following the guidelines of uh, the bishop or uh, the bishop as instructed by the state. But uh, on the front cover of the monitor bulletin, there's a priest in our diocese whose uh, parish they featured along with ours uh, in an article. And he's a physician as well. He was an anesthesiologist before he became a priest. And he's distributing Eucharist with a blue nitrile glove to the faithful, uh, right on the cover of the monitor, big old colorful image, and uh, you know, that's not correct. We're not supposed to do that. I guess he's entitled to do it if he wants to. Um, But uh, just so you know, uh, hey, Father Manning doesn't use a glove. Well, the United States bishops have said said don't use a glove. The bishop has said don't use a glove. Um, Occasionally, someone wants to receive with a glove on. I haven't done anything about that. It's awkward to take them off. Um, But the whole controversy about gloves, no gloves, cotton swabs for the anointing, no cotton swabs, Q-tips, thumbs, you know, there's this ongoing controversy. In any case, um, I'm following the guidelines and uh, to really the spirit and the letter. Uh, So I want you to have continued confidence in that. And that's the only reason really I say anything because that picture speaks a thousand words. Um, Today we celebrate 
this um, an interesting challenge of readings. I think perhaps we've heard in a different way, in a different light in past years and perhaps even in past times of our lives. If you've ever heard, I was trying to think if I preached that, sometimes maybe by implication, that the gospel about everything done in secret will be made light, it will be brought into the light, is something to do, we might get the idea about sneaky things, that uh, anything we've been sneaking around doing will be revealed, almost like thieves in the night and you suddenly turn the lights on and then suddenly there's everybody scatters because shameful things done in the dark will be made light, will be brought to the light. And I think that's certainly a possibility of interpretation. But when you read the whole gospel and when you this ch- even the whole this whole gospel section and put the gospel in context, I think it more means that those who are conspiring and those who are lying and those who have a non-faith-based way of looking at the world will be revealed to be following the wrong way, the wrong path. Truth will come to light and the truth will set us free. And that's not necessarily a thing about our secret sins will be, will shame us, but more about those who are lying to us in any forum for, to manipulate us or to get power or money or prestige will be shown to be liars and the truth will be revealed. So that's a very optimistic message, I think, since we live in this age of spin and PR and media speak and social media tyranny when someone picks a mantra and just runs with it and then it's suddenly the gospel. Think about how rigorously some of the things in the recent years have been enforced by social media critics, by social media and the media, as if it was gospel. I would be a little bit afraid even if they were the ones preaching the real gospel and in charge of discipline in the church. They get crazy and very intolerant. Um, And so that should give us courage and should give us hope that when Jesus talks about the light coming to reveal the truth in the world, he's the truth, he's the light. And all of us will be shown to be sinners, as St. Paul says, uh, as the reading, it wasn't Paul, was it? Yes, it was Paul. It was the second reading. All of us are sinners and we'll all be shown to be sinners. That's not the bad part. It is certainly... We need to express sorrow for it. But the good part is we're redeemed for that. And if we're on the path of truth and we seek the truth and we seek the Lord, then that's all good news for us. Those who were not doing that, that is very bad news for them. Uh, So today I think uh, I take hope from this gospel. I take hope from this passage that those who are spreading propaganda and lies and half-truths masquerading as full truths or full lies masquerading as truth, will be shown up for what they're doing. And the truth, which is revealed in Jesus Christ through the Gospels, will be truly what sets us free. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us man and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. For the church, may we live in confident assurance of God's abiding providential care for us. We pray to the Lord. For civic leaders and those in authority, may God give them insight into the effects of their decisions and help them make wise choices. We pray to the Lord. For those suffering, may they recover stability in their lives and experience the peace of God. We pray to the Lord. For all fathers and those who have shown us a father's love, may God grant them good health, <clears throat> guide them in being good examples, and help them to be a source of encouragement to their children. We pray to the Lord. For the young people of our parish who are receiving their first Eucharist, may they always come to the Lord's table with the same excitement and anticipation. And may those receiving confirmation be led by the Holy Spirit to receive, to give faithful witness in their words and their deeds. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, May they experience the fullness of joy with the saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear the prayers that we've spoken and those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We unite our prayers to those of our brothers and sisters all over the world, and we make them in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and blood of your Son, Lord, we offer this sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, to live like us in all things with sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, for sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Confident that our loving God hears our prayers, let us place our needs before our generous Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing, especially on this day, on our fathers. Loving God, you have given us life and cared for us through our fathers. We thank you for their lives, their care, and the wisdom they have taught us. Fill them today and all days with your Holy Spirit of wisdom and love. Help them follow your voice and teach their children to do the same. May we honor them with profound respect and by living your gospel. In Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Please pray for our uh, confirmandi tomorrow. They'll be confirmed, 90 or something like that. Uh, students' children will be confirmed. And our first Holy Communions will be Wednesday, so pray for them as well. <laughs>